Rise of the Arch Illager in Chapter 2. You can't tell me. I need to start over. But you know what? I'm live recording, so I can't. <laughs> All right. Chapter 2 of Rise of the Arch Illager. You can't tell everyone this is my fault, Archie said. You can't. He'd snatched up a blade of his own, one too heavy for him to wield properly, although there wasn't much to be done about that. The entire way back to the, to the Illager mansion, he kept well behind Thord, making sure to stay out of range of the bigger Illager's spells. He'd paid the price for being too careless around Thord once. Today already. He didn't care to make that same mistake again. For his part, Thord ignored Archie's pleas, with the exception of the occasional smug chuckle. Archie knew the evoker would sell him out the moment they all got back to the Illager mansion, but he didn't see what he could do about it. He kept begging until his voice grew hoarse, and then he finally gave up. When they came within bowshot of the mansion, a large three-story building that housed most of the tribe, the other illagers rushed out to greet them, and Archie's stomach twisted in his guts. He knew exactly how they were going to take the news of the raiding party's defeat, and who they were going to blame, if he let them. An idea blazing in his head, Archie set his jaw, braced himself, and raced out in front of Thord. The evoker growled at him as he passed him by, but... With his injuries, he couldn't keep up. He barely even seemed to try. The illager leader, a tall, skinny one by the name of Walda, snipped forward from the pack of anxious people who had gathered for news of the raiding party. Archie could tell by the disgusted looks on their faces that they had already suspected how the awful raid had gone. No one ever came back alone from such a venture with good news. The hero did it. Archie told Balda. He came up while we were fighting the undead mobs and beating them and stole our victory. A few of the illagers in the back of the crowd growled in contempt. While every illager knew the risks involved in being part of a raiding party, they took any such loss personally. And how did this happen? Balda asked, a deep frozen frown greasing her face. Archie pointed back toward Thord. It was all because that worthless fool thought he could take on a hero all by himself. It's all his fault. It worried Archie to do this, to openly turn against a fellow illager as powerful and conniving as the evoker, but Thord had announced his intentions to do the very same thing to him. The only way Archie could prevent being banished was to start his campaign of lies first. It was a long shot, one that might suffer for, but he didn't see what, that he had any other choice. A gasp went up through the crowd. The people here knew Thord well. They understood he was braggart and a bully, but they also held him up to, as one of their most powerful evokers. The idea that he would make such a horrible mistake and that it would cost them an entire raiding party horrified. Archie realized he was going to have to sell his story hard and fast. Thord was getting closer every second. Thord was our designated leader, he told Walda. You appointed him yourself. She hesitated, then nodded that he did. Then he bears the ultimate blame for our failure, doesn't he? Walda's shoulders wobbled at this. As she tried to absorb the implications of Archie's words. Perhaps... By that logic, you might be able to say the blame is mine. Archie gasped in dismay, sensing that he'd perhaps gone too far. I would never... Walda dismissed the impending apology with an impatient wave, and he continued. It's more than that. He didn't set a watch to look for troubles like, our, like a hero. He just plunged straight into the battle against the undead without taking any precautions at all. Walda didn't seem moved by that, and the others nearby began staring at Archie as if he'd gone mad. I mean, wouldn't that seem wise to set a watch to make sure he didn't get 
ambushed by someone else while he was in battle. That's exactly how the last raiding party we get lost died. <sighs> that was many years ago, Malva said with a pitying look. She clearly remembered that both Archie's parents had been per had perished in that incident. And we still haven't learned any lessons from that. We still charge into the fight without figuring out what other dangers might lie in wait for us, and we're still paying the worst price. And it's all your fault, Thorne said from the right behind him. Archie spun around and realized that he'd gotten all so caught up with complaining to Valda that he hadn't heard Thord arrive. On top of that, he'd wasted all the advance time for which he'd run so hard. What? Archie put a hand to his chest as if his heart might pop out of it in shock. How is it my fault? Valda raised a hand to silence Archie and then turned toward Thord. Word from our little friend here is that this disaster is actually your fault. Thord smirked down at the illager. The illager, of course he would say that. Trying to cover his own butt after he felt to spot a hero coming our way. And how would I have managed that? I was in the middle of that battle against the undead mobs, just like you. Just like everyone else. Just like you ordered us to do. Thord looked down at Archie gave him a sad shake of his head. I understand what you're trying to do here. After all, why wouldn't you? What do you have to lose? Archie stared at him. What are you talking about? Lying. All the lies. Just listen to yourself. You can't bear to think about what you did, so you're blaming anyone else but yourself. What I did? Archie almost fell over in shock. Are you out of your tiny mind? See... Thor said to the crowd hovering around him, but especially to Walda. The denial runs deep. I almost wonder if he believes his lies. Archie actually gasped at Thor, unable to summon any words to complain. The fact is, Thor continued, that I did set a watch over our battlefield, and I gave Archie the job. The little illager struggled to find his voice. That's not true. Thord ignored the interruption. As you know, he doesn't much care for fighting, and he complained about having to come along with us and do his duty for the tribe the entire time. By now, we're all used to it, right? And he's not much use on the battlefield anyway. A few in the crowd chuckled at that. Archie glared at them, but his naked fury didn't seem to sting them at all. I figured he'd at least could lend us his eyes, Thord peered down at Archie with scathing contempt, but he couldn't even manage that. Thord turned fully toward Archie now. Where were you when the hero showed up? That's what I can't figure out. I know you weren't in battle. You're never in battle if you can help it. There was some truth to that. Archie hated fighting and would have done anything to get out of being a part of the patrol if he could manage it. Now, though, he saw that why Thord had brought him along. You knew this was going to go wrong, Archie said to him. And when it did, you knew you were going to need the scapegoat. That's why you chose me. It is the duty, actually the privilege, of every illager to take their turns in the raiding parties, Walter said. Archie's heart dropped. The moment she opened her mouth to defend Thord, he knew he was ruined. If he couldn't convince her of what Thord had done to the raiding party, and especially to him, he was doomed. I didn't deny that. I went along on the raid. I even brought my own sword. If you can call that a sword, Thord said with barely concealed sneer. And Thord never assigned me to watch over the battle. He was in charge. That would have been his job. This is all his fault. The crowd of villagers surrounding Archie and Thord seemed to hold their collective breath. No one said a word, apparently waiting to, on Walda to render a verdict. I 
Eventually, she opened her mouth to speak. It horrifies me that you would accuse each other of such terrible things. Illagers must stick together, even on the field of battle. Especially on the field of battle. Otherwise, we stand no chance against our foes. She gazed at both Archie and Thord. The evoker met her steely eyes. But Archie couldn't help but wither beneath her gaze. Do you remember what it was like when we were we roamed the lands, each to ourselves? The monks picked us off one by one, destroying us at their will. It was only when we were united, when we became a tribe, that we stood any chance against them at all. Walda spread the arms of her robe wide to encompass every person in the tribe, and the other illagers all muttered in agreement with her. They all knew exactly what she was talking about, as did Archie. While life among the tribe wasn't always wonderful, it was far better than any time he'd spent wandering alone. He shuddered at the memories that still haunted his sleep. And now you two come to us, still bickering with each other, after having suffered a horrible and complete loss. You complain about each other while the rest of your raiding party is defeated and gone. Clearly, you care not about the tribe, but yourselves. No, Archie whispered to himself. He could see what was coming next, but he felt powerless to stop it. He racked his brain trying to come up with something, anything he could say, to bring it all into a screeching halt, to keep Balda from making a decision that would condemn him to the worst fate he could possibly com contemplate. He looked over to Thord for help. That's how desperate he was. And the larger illager reached out and put a comforting hand on his shoulder. Then he gave Archie a nasty yet expectant frown. Why don't you explain yourself, he said, enjoying every moment of it. Tell everyone here how you let the rest of us die. Archie's jaw dropped. For a moment, he'd let hope creep back into his heart. But just like always, Thor had ripped it clear out of his chest again. You won't get away with this, he shouted as he launched himself at Thor. He swung himself widely with his fists, intending both intending to bash the injured evoker about the head and shoulders. To Archie's utter shock, Thor dropped to the ground. In an instant, one of Archie's fists made contact with him. Archie had landed only a glancing blow, but the evoker toppled backwards and sprawled across the open ground as if he'd been punched by a giant. The people around Archie grasped in horror. Archie stared down at Thor and then at his fist. He had barely made contact. There was no way he'd knocked him down. That could only mean one thing. Get up, you faker! Archie shouted at Thord. Quit pretending to be hurt and get up. Thord squirmed away from Archie, still on his backside, clutching his wounded leg. Archie stomped over and kicked him in the thigh. The illagers prized their strength over anything. To show a sign of weakness before others could be lethal. If Thord was going to fake being injured, and Archie was willing to fake, triumphing over him. Get up! Thor howled in agony and curled up into a ball. As he did, the other illagers surged forward, and several of them grabbed Archie by the arms and hauled him back, away from where Thor lay withering in pain. What are you doing? Walda demanded. Kicking an illager meter after a battle? And are you out of your mind? I'm not going to put up with him anymore, Archie said. It's bad enough you bullied me my entire life. Now he's lying to me about me, too. I've had it. Wallace stood there before Archie and waited for him to fall silent, even if he couldn't quite calm down. Are you finished? She asked softly, but with enough con command in her voice that everyone in that part of the forest could hear her even over Thord's groans. Archie glanced down at Thord and caught him grinning up at her. 
The down evoker wiped the smile from his face before anyone else could catch him. Archie drew in a deep breath and let out, let it out slowly as he struggled to calm himself. I suppose I am. Walda nodded to him. I'd like to thank you, she said. I thought this was going to be a hard decision, but you just made it easier for me. Archie cocked his head to one side, not quite clear on what Walter was heading toward. Despite that, he kept his mouth shut and waited for her to continue. She motioned to both Thor and Archie. Obviously, this kind of behavior can't go on in any way. I blame myself. I should have put a stop to it a long time ago. Archie imagined being able to, take, to be a part of a tribe that didn't have Thor in it. And he felt a huge surge of relief. I would truly appreciate that. The tension was always been keeping on someone who already contributed greatly to the tribe's might, or keeping on a weakling who had potential. Archie suddenly didn't like the turn of the conversation. Wait, what? But your actions today have made the choice clear. Archie put up his hands to plead with Walda to stop. Hey, no, I didn't betray the raiding party. He's lying. He stabbed a finger down at Thor, who rolled and groaned in pain, pretending to be only half conscious. That may be true. I cannot prove to dis or disprove that. But the manner in which you attacked him in front of the rest of the tribe, the way you kicked a wounded Illager nearly to death, he was already halfway there, Archie shouted, both desperate and indignant. That's enough, Walta said. Her calm facade had finally cracked, and the naked rage on her face hit Archie like a diamond blade. You're not only worthless and weak, you've done actual harm to the leadership of the tribe. You need to leave, now. But that's not fair, Archie protested, although he knew it would do him no good. Walda pointed towards the lands beyond the camp, into the dark and foreboding forest, forest that sprawled all around them. You have been banished. Go, and never come back. And that is the end of chapter two. Um, I'd like to take a moment. Uh, I know <laughs> there's some people out there that want to hear the rest of this, and I'm going to do it slowly because it does take a lot out of me. Um, uh, I'm planning right now, <laughs> sadly, it's going to be one a week. I will try to do more, but I can't make any promises. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you soon.